Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for taking out time from your agendas to participate in the today's webinar on global record on stocks and fisheries. I'm Sara Garavelli and I'm the outreach manager of the Blue Bridge project, which has organized this webinar. A couple of words on Blue Bridge for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, Blue Bridge is an Horizon 2020 project, started a couple of years ago, even if it has a very much longer story, as it builds up on the outputs of the previous uh, iMarine project. Uh, Blue Bridge delivers innovative data services, what we call virtual research environments, or VREs, to support Blue Growth practitioners in solving their data issues. The purpose of today is to describe and demo one of the most promising BlueBridge tools, which is the global record of stocks and fisheries, VRE. Uh, the webinar lasts around one hour. Uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions uh, via the GoToWebinar question box. And after the presentation and demo from our speakers uh, that you can see in the camera, we will address all your questions. Uh, the recording of the webinar and the presentation will be made available on the bluebridge-vres.eu website since tomorrow. Now, I'm pleased to introduce you our two speakers, both from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO. The first one is Aureliano Gentile. Aureliano has been involved in the development of information products in the FAO Fisheries and Aquaculture Department since 2001. He is the focal point for the development of many web components of the current fisheries and aquaculture knowledge base, like the firm's database, the BME database, and has large experience in liaison with the regional fishery bodies representatives as part of the firm's partnership secretariat. The second speaker is Giulia Gorelli, and Giulia is a fisheries information manager in FAO, working mainly with the firm collating stocks and fisheries data at global scale. Previously, she has been working at the Institute of Marine Sciences of Barcelona for almost five years, where she conducted scientific research in fish stock assessment and fisheries management. Okay, I would like to thank you very much, Giulia and Aureliano, and I leave the floor to you. So, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Um, uh, let's start uh, presenting the global record of stocks and fisheries, uh, uh, one of the components of the Blue Bridge project. And quickly, the outline we will introduce uh, briefly uh, some details about the GSF, key methodology and standards that we applied for the, its development. We'll try also a, a quick live demo. And then uh, during the development, we have identified the uh, opportunities and what's next in the coming uh, year. So first of all, what is the global record of certain fisheries? Um, uh, this working definition is a comprehensive and transparent inventory of certain fisheries records across multiple data providers. Mm -hmm. the, uh, along the project, we have uh, uh, collected the uh, data from three sources of information, the fisheries and resources monitoring systems, the RAM legacy stock assessment database from the University of Washington, and Fish Source, which is a program of the Sustainable Fishery Partnership. By collating these sources, we got results in an increased uh, global data coverage. The GSF harmonizes different existing standards. We have standards from international, regional, and national, and uh, these data sources <laughs> are being uh, collated with the aim to build the unique identifiers uh, for stock fisheries. Um, the GSF contains uh, information on biological aspects, the stocks, and on fishing activity aspects, the fishing operations, defined as a fisheries. So the information is mainly um, categorized under these two uh, information domains. Where it comes from? Uh, it was said that it's part of the Blue Bridge project uh, um, developed by FAO and other partners. The technical development is carried out by the CNR and FORT. Uh, uh, in the full note of the presentation, the full name, anyway, it's Italian and Greek Research Institute, who are partners in the Blue Bridge project. 
stock and feature information metadata uh, related tools are available in a VRE of the Emory initiative. For those who are not um, uh, well knowledgeable about the VRE, let's say this is our environment where we can run applications together with the uh, data and this environment uh, let's say limited uh, can be limited to uh, specific uh, users. This iMarine is the initiative um, relying on the D4 science infrastructure powered by the CNR, uh, with whom FAO has collaborated for more than 10 years. D4 science uh, actually offers a great potential for further developing the GeoSurf, and we can integrate additional uh, data from other sources on stocks and fisheries. Potential audiences were identified among the RFBs and their member states, the seafood and industry, initial agencies of governments dealing with stock and fishery reporting, researchers and officers working on global analysis on state of fishery resources, NGOs, and the general public. When we, we started the design of the development of the GRSF. We have identified the two major business cases, um, offering key service, with the idea to, to offer key services to stakeholders involved in global, regional, and national state of stock indicators, as well as um, public and private actors involved in uh, eco labeling, sustainability, and sustainable fisheries. And here I would like to give the floor to uh, my colleague Julia, who, who can further uh, describe uh, the methodology and standards we have applied uh, while developing the Julia, please. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, I'm going to briefly describe the methodology that we use to create the uh, RSF knowledge base from the three different uh, base sources. So, three steps of this methodology were the database structure design, the selection of data information standards for each database field, creation of the GRSF records from the different database sources, the detection of overlapping GRSF records, and the assignment of unique identifiers to each GRSF record. So, as for the first step, database structure design, so the database was structured into two main domains, one containing information on stocks and one containing information on fisheries. And for each of these domains, specific database fields were established. So this is a schematic representation of what a database looks like. So for stocks, we have- uh, Sorry, Julia, to interrupt you. Can you please move closer to the microphone on the on bit on the other side because your voice is a bit- uh, Okay, yes. Yes, it's thank you. Yeah. Is this better? Yes. Okay, but let me know if, you, if there are problems with the sound, please. Thank you. So, as I was saying, the two main domains of the GRSF database, stocks and fisheries, this is a schematic representation of what the uh, database looks like. So for stocks, we have uh, a field of information containing information on the species, one field containing information on the assessment and the distribution or the distribution area. And then we have fields of information containing uh, um, time series of data or indicators like catch time series, abundance level, fishing pressure, or all information and data that is, uh, has to do with the, well, with the stock assessment and the stock status. And for fisheries, we have information on the species, the fishing area, the gear type, the flag state, the management body. And again, we have associated time series of indicators. So as you can see, the, um, the fields represented in light blue contain time independent information, which includes the identification information uh, that identifies each stock and each fishery as a different record. While the, um, the fields represented in purple contain time dependent information, so a time series of data and indicator that can change in time. 
So the second step of the methodology was the selection of specific data and information standards for each database field. So for example, for the field species, the standard accepted in GRSF for the scientific name and the code is the ASFIS classification. If the species is missing in the ASFIS classification, then the worms uh, classification is used. And a similar process was established for each database field. And this step, of course, implied the need to develop some uh, linkage tables to map any local standard that was used in the database sources to the GRSF accepted standard in order to harmonize all the information included in the GRSF. So the third step was the creation of the GRSF records from the different database sources. So the first step was the extraction of the relevant data and information uh, to fill the GRSF fields. Then uh, there was the standardization of the imported data to harmonize all the information using the linkage tables. And then the creation of the various records to create the GRSF knowledge base. So the first step after the records were created was the detection of the overlapping records. So there can be the case when two or more records have got the same time independent information, so the same identification information. Like for example, uh, there can be the same stock that is present in two uh, database sources. Like for example, the same stock is present in fish source and RAM. So this information is imported twice in GRSF, but thanks to the standardization of the information, this can be automatically uh, detected and the two records can be flagged as overlapping. And then after the validation from an expert, they can merge into one single GRSF record and all the time dependent information that was associated to the two records or the time series of indicators are collated. So the fifth, fifth and last step is the assignment of unique identifiers to each GRSF fishery and stock record. So um, there are three types of identifier. The first type is the universally unique identifier, the UUID, which is a machine readable uh, identifier that is assigned according to a specific IT protocol. The second type is the semantic identifier, which is a human readable code that is codified according to a specific convention. And there is the GRSF short title, which is human readable. Again, it's a more friendly title, let's say. So here is an example. Uh, this is a stock where the species is Tunus alalunga, and this is the species code, and this comes from the ASFIS uh, uh, classification. Then the assessment area is the North Atlantic. The assessment area code is uh, ALB-N, and this comes from one of the uh, accepted standards for, for area. And here we have the UUID for this stock, so the machine readable code. Here we have the semantic identifier, which as you can see is codified as the species code plus the assessment area code. And then we have the short title, which is a more friendly way of naming the stock. Okay, so the section of methodology standard is uh, finished here, and I give the floor back to Aureliano. Thank you, Julia. Um, so, uh, yes, now it's the time for a, a live demo. A few words introducing it. So, the GSF application is based on the Amarin data catalog, which in turn is um, based on the open source SECAN software for those uh, IT people knowing this. Uh, we have um, designed and built a two uh, environments. One is the GRSF per se, the GRSF VRE for the public users with the validated records. And the other one is the GRSF admin uh, VRE for authorized users who manage and validate the records. Today, we will explore the GRSF admin environment. Um, for your information, the knowledge base is built with Matware, is a software uh, made and produced by Fort with the semantic web technology uh, using ontologies. And these ontologies are, let's say, the way how we have uh, tried to uh, harmonize and standardize the data uh, or to uh, mapping rules. So let me jump. 
from the PowerPoint to the browser. Um, you should see my browser now. This is the uh, Amarin Gateway ac accessible from the Amarin website. Uh, you lo I lo just log in and enter uh, the uh, environment where here I can find all my VREs and I will enter the GSF admin and straight to the record management. <clears throat> here, when, apologies, we will, you will find now a um, few more uh, let's say, terms. Uh, we have here the GSF catalog, which is uh, the place where we contain all the GSF records, stocks and fisheries, plus the legacy records, so the source records, the firms, RAM, and feed source. Um, the uh, catalog can be browsed by a search uh, tool or by uh, different type of groups. We have uh, uh, two organizations, so the source records, or uh, the GSF itself, or you can filter by specific groups uh, like uh, the fishery or the stocks or the fishery uh, generated uh, uh, only uh, from a specific source or by type. As I was telling you, we have um, uh, stocks and fishery, the two main domain information, which in turn they're further broken down into assessment unit and fishing activity. Assessment unit is uh, basically those stocks for which we have at least one uh, stock assessment information uh, and uh, the fishing activity is in, in records uh, um, describing uh, in activity from a fishing operation viewpoint which includes a species a uh, year flag state um, the others the fishing description and marine resource are higher level uh, description of the species um, which may uh, lack uh, some uh, key information. And then we have the legacy, which again uh, is the source. So the uh, first view would be let's uh, enter the, uh, uh, let's access the entire uh, amount of records, 12,000 records for the time being. These are, need, are not yet being validated. Therefore, once will be validated, uh, this number may uh, decrease. This is the overall list uh, of, of records uh, paginated in uh, hundreds of pages, obviously. And you you see here on top in bold the GSF and standard name, then the short name, American Place Grand, Grand Bank, and uh, um, the semantic identifiers, as Julia was describing it. We will we'll see in detail in a second. And uh, if any, um, attached the information is provided in this case uh, we have a various uh, csv file in the left bar um, we have a different way to narrow down the information uh, by types by groups uh, and tags uh, in this case i would like to uh, filter by assessment unit so i'm narrowing down to 2000 stocks and then I can further filter as uh, uh, stocks uh, identified from uh, first from firms uh, database. And finally, I could further um, filtering by searching an example by Pajalus. Yes, and here let's click on one of it, an example, Pajelus below the Western Gulf of Guinea. This is uh, the example of uh, uh, a GSF uh, fact sheet or GSF record page. This is the title, the GSF standard title, which is made of a scientific name plus uh, uh, geographic area. A short name is usually built with um, an English common name, but not necessarily English. And you see more details on geographic area, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, and Benin. The semantic identifiers and the UID. This is the unique URL which identifies uniquely this uh, record. 
uh, particularly this is the UID for this record. Uh, a map uh, lightly describing the extent of this uh, uh, monitoring area for, for this stock or for this assessment unit. The data resource uh, box uh, indicates uh, which are uh, which is or which are the sources for this information. In this case is firms, and then a, a number of uh, um, time series or attached information, which we go visiting in a second. Then we have the stock identity with a number of fields: assessment area, the database source, the semantic identifier which type of GSF, short name, species, and so on. And you see over oh, here, you have all the values of, uh, of this information. Ultimately, this uh, stock is by default uh, uh, flagged as um, suitable for traceability purpose because it, uh, it, it satisfies the requirement. In the stock data uh, box, um, instead, you have the latest uh, information available for this uh, record. While the full time series are displayed above here, there are some uh, extraction for the latest uh, uh, four or five years. Further down in the additional information, you will find uh, uh, some metadata for the request management, as well as the unique ID, the QR code, and, uh, uh, and how this uh, stock is uh, uniquely identified. This stock is, uh, uh, as of today, pending meaning that um, uh, it has not been yet re revised by an expert who will finally validate and once validated this stock will be automatically this record will be automatically um, copied and published in the uh, GSF VRE uh, for public use. Let me scroll back up and in example we could uh, see the um, the uh, catch time series. This is associated information uh, extracted from the firm's uh, database. Uh, you can you can download this in CSV format uh, or uh, through the web. You can even generate uh, uh, a map. Sorry, a map, a, a graph. Uh, so this is uh, these are the here. here are the values. Yes, you see, and this is a, a graph generated by the time series provided. Where, where possible, where feasible, where applicable, you can also generate maps. Okay, let me go back home to the search uh, RSF and uh, maybe I can search for flies in the RAM bank. This is um, this uh, example of navigation. I make it to show a record from uh, multiple uh, sources. An example, this one. You see, this record is Poglossoides platysoides uh, in the Grand Bank area. Uh, this record has been identified by merging multiple sources, in this case, uh, all of them, uh, FIS source, RAM, and FIRMS, the, the three contributing ones. And um, in example, if we are going to see the abundance level uh, information collected for this record, you see these are the values. And these are the various uh, uh, sources, which is, uh, we have a um, time series for firms or time series for this source. Okay. Um, last uh, example would be showing you uh, a fishery. An example, let's still search for Brosoides. And then, uh, oh, oh, sorry. And then let me narrow down for fishing by fishing activities. 
and these are a number of results. All these are fisheries. Let's take this one, an example. This is an example of a fishery record. And a fishery uh, record is identified by the species, the area, the management entities, the corresponding, um, let's say, jurisdiction area for the management entities, the flag state, and the gear. These elements, when all of them are available, uh, make this fishing activity uh, flaggable for uh, traceability purpose. And, um, and uh, all these are uh, upon specific standards. All, fishing, uh, all fisheries, are uh, similarly to um, the stocks, uh, contain uh, the uh, data resource box, the identity box, and the uh, um, attached uh, data. Ultimately, you will find the unique ID and the QR. Okay, uh, with this, I would uh, uh, close the live demo and uh, go back to the slides. Here we are. And so, um, while developing the uh, project, uh, we have identified a number of topics which would deserve. Uh, Aureliano, sorry. Yes, please. Uh, the audio now is not very. Um, good. So try to <laughs> assume the same position of <laughs> five minutes before. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hope you are hearing me now better. Mm, not really. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. Now it's it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Very good. Don't move. <laughs> Don't move. Okay. Okay. So I was saying that uh, during the development, I have identified a uh, um, few topics which would deserve uh, further uh, work on it and development even beyond the GSF uh, project. Uh, in example, standardization for area management entity. For area, we have identified that in some cases, the special codes, the are sorry, but you are very difficult to understand. Can you, I think you are too close to the microphone. Try okay. this. Can, you, can we try it like this? Yes, this is perfect. Thank you. So, um, the, um, in some cases, the special codes are not always adequate for representing, uh, identifying the assessment areas, fishing areas, or jurisdiction. Also, we have um, created a repository of uh, management entities which are it's a local registry for national international organization with mandate on monitoring management. And this uh, repository also uh, changed across time. So we may need a, a, a better standard for that and also finding a, a, a ways to maintain it. We have identified a number of products and services. An example, uh, assignment publication of the UIDs for, subject, for new subject issues. Um, publication of information and data for individual uh, uh, stock fishery. Services which uh, could summarize uh, the stock status at different geographic levels. For example, give me all the uh, stocks with, uh, for the North Atlantic within a certain uh, status of exploitation. Or service to download available data uh, by applying uh, specific filters. Inclusion of data that is currently not today publicly available. This is uh, this slide somehow summarizes the the vision. Let's imagine that uh, whatever uh, fish been in the world uh, could be enriched with this additional label uh, specifying which are, which uh, this which fish is, is coming from which population. So we here we have information on species, the area, management authority. Jurisdiction, the gear, uh, flag state, and uh, the identifiers, as well as, um, uh, as we say, identifiers which are machine readable, okay, and the UID, and the human readable, which at the end uh, build this type of labels. And so, yes, uh, we there are many stakeholders who believe that the future uh, global demand is based on this 
uh, standardize the feature identifiers. Um, we can associate additional information. So stocks and fishery could be, this UID could be grouped into families. So we should find a way how to do it. And also uh, to this UID, we can uh, concatenate additional information uh, from other sources. An example, uh, information on asset types, on features, communities, company names, uh, by exploiting a different uh, technology, not excluding the blockchain technologies. Uh, this is the last slide. What's next? The project will end on February 2018. Um, then uh, we will release the GSF records in, in the public environment uh, and by, by validating all of them. Um, we, uh, there are a group uh, um, of people uh, finalizing the governance and sustainability model for this um, initiative. And then um, who also should identify the services which should be supplemented. For your information, uh, uh, coming meetings, we have now the EAB TWG uh, taking a working group meeting with the firms uh, taking a working group on GSF in Rome on the second week of February. And then we have an EI Marine um, uh, advisory board meeting in Brussels and then the Blue Bridge panel event. Uh, the day after 15 of February. So with this, uh, we say thank you, and we uh, uh, our apologies for the audio if it was not perfect. And uh, let's give the floor back to our uh, moderator. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Julia and Aureliano. I think it was a very, very good and interesting. Um, there is a question uh, from the audience. That says, uh, can I retrieve the stock status through a web service? Is there an, an API? Uh, so, first of all, the GSF catalog. Sorry, Aureliano, try to talk with the camera really in front of you. So, move towards the center because I think this is the issue. <laughs> try. Okay, is it better now? Yes. <laughs> So the, um, uh, the GSF catalog is uh, do offering APIs for all the downloadable materials. Uh, so in, 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 um, already today, uh, many um, uh, sets of information can be downloaded through API. Uh, the idea is also to uh, uh, develop specific uh, services uh, to uh, satisfy this type of uh, uh, demand. It's just a matter to identify exactly uh, which type of service, which type of data should be uh, retrieved and uh, in which form and so on. And, and then, yes, this would be feasible. Okay. Uh, at the moment, uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Okay, another question. What plans are there to add other sources? And what is then the copyright? So about the copyright and other sources. Yes, so um, let me start from the copyright. Um, let's say that um, code in the Baltic uh, um, not necessarily uh, uh, requires uh, an intellectual property. So somehow the identification of the GSF record is, uh, if I can say, free of copyright in the sense that uh, I could uh, make uh, whatever classifications, although it falls under the um, uh, who is distributing this. Um, it's a different uh, um, uh, aspect is on for the uh, associated data. And this data, uh, the copyright reside uh, under the um, data owners if I can use this word, and therefore uh, there would be also a copy, a specific uh, um, terms of use for the data uh, upon specific agreements uh, among the data providers. Um, as of today, uh, the uh, GSF is within the, it is distributed within the D4Science uh, uh, platform, 
which is powered by the CNR. So uh, somehow that is the uh, distributor competent authority. Um, but then we are in the in the developing of the sustainability model. Uh, also, these aspects are going to be uh, tackled and well defined. And um, the other question uh, was on the, the um, if there are any plans uh, to add ah, any yes, other sources. Yes. For the other sources, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, so, um, yes, um, in, in the business case of the GSF, uh, um, uh, willing to support the dissemination and uh, monitoring of stock status, the idea is that also other um, institutions, uh, uh, and why not countries, uh, they can contribute uh, uh submitting uh, their uh, uh, information within the gsf so uh, yes the, the project has started with three uh, if i can say champions um but then the platform is uh, fully designed to uh, host uh, uh, as many sources uh, as possible uh, indeed uh, with the ultimate goal uh, to uh, achieve a wider coverage uh, as wider as possible but how long does it take to inter the integration of a new source? Well, uh, this it depends uh, who is the, uh, the which is the new source and uh, how many records. Uh, uh, so there are many factors uh, affecting this. Um, but uh, let's say following the standards and uh, if the data are well standardized or compliant with the GSF standard, which are um, mostly relying relying on um, uh, global and international standards. Um, in that case, the uh, upload of new information would, would not be uh, too complex. Okay. And always, we have a question on, um, do you know how many other known data sources could be taken into GRSF? Um, well, uh, yes, um, uh, there are uh, ideas of other uh, sources who can contribute. Um, but let's imagine that uh, every country with having uh, universities or research centers uh, uh, working on uh, stock assessment or, or, or management of fishery resources, uh, they potentially are eligible. It's also a matter to uh, identify authoritative uh, uh, sources and uh, with uh, reliable data. Yes, and exactly <laughs> the question related to reliability of the data sources. So someone is asking, if I add the pirates of the Caribbean stocks, how are, they, are these records validated? So what's the validation process behind? So, uh, this is also this part is uh, in, very important, uh, and uh, it uh, it will be part uh, of this uh, ongoing uh, sustainability model. Let's say that uh, there will be a sort of a GSF board made of experts, and Julia explained this uh, in the sense that we need to uh, have an expert validation. So, the GSF algorithm, the knowledge base is capable to detect uh, a similar information based on standards. Uh, so the application is uh, suggesting uh, a merge of information, collation of data, and so on. But then the, the, uh, the last word is uh, to, affine, uh, is to uh, uh, an expert or, or um, a board of experts who has to validate the records one by one. This must be clear. And, and therefore, the pirates of the Caribbean uh, will have a tough life because uh, if they even could pass the first step, but then probably they won't pass uh, the other uh, validation steps. Okay. Um, then there is a question related to governance. So which is the, mo the governance model for GRSF? Um, First of all, I would um, uh, highlight the fact that uh, we, we are envisaging a public center partnership uh, with the involvement of, all, of also the private sector. You can imagine that if 
this uh, unique identifier will find its own way to, and will take off. Uh, the unique identifier serves, uh, uh, yes, as for unique identifying stocks and, and therefore for their monitoring, but also for fisheries. Uh, and this can be applied for traceability, certification schemes, and so on. Can be uh, these unique uh, identifications could be really functional to many uh, needs. And therefore, also the possibility to involve uh, uh, the private sector. Um, the industry, but not only, also uh, artisanal uh, fisheries uh, uh, could be uh, very uh, interesting. It has its own potentialities. This is uh, all matters which are on, uh, they, uh, in, in, on the table to, for discussion. And uh, as I was showing in that slide on the upcoming meetings, this is a um, topic for those meetings uh, for uh, to provide the uh, answers. Okay. And finally, uh, how and if uh, you contribute to, to the Sustainable Development Goal 14? Um, SDG sorry. 14. Yeah, no, SDG, SDG 14 is very clear. Uh, the first part of your question, uh, the how, what? How and if uh, you uh, contribute to that? Yes, uh, as uh, we were saying, this um, one of the two uh, business cases uh, of the GSF development was the support to the uh, SDG 14.4.1, which is the proportion of uh, stocks uh, uh, sustainably exploited. Um, so uh, let's say this is uh, th this application and the overall development is. Uh, focused on uh, uh, dissemination and monitoring. And uh, uh, the GSF can be a, a place where you can store uh, results of uh, evaluation of the state of stocks indicators. Uh, you store it over there and you disseminate and you apply uh, specific uh, services for monitoring um, in whatever uh, way it is desired. So. Uh, this is exactly one of the two reasons why we developed uh, the GSF. And as you can see in this uh, uh, one slide about the GSF, is indeed uh, here summarized uh, the stakeholders involved in global, regional, and national state of stocks indicators. Um, and the other one, as I was saying, is uh, on traceability. Please. Okay, so I don't think we have any other questions. No. So I would like to thank you again, both you and Julia, for the very nice presentation. I apologize again for the audio towards uh, our participants. And um, I think we can, unless you want to add any further remark, I guess we can close the webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.